everybody. I'm so glad you joined me again. It's time to make our craft to go with our fun story, The Napping House. It was written by Audrey Wood. I thought it'd be kind of fun if we could make a napping house playset of our own. So I created one out of just plain construction paper and a whole bunch of construction paper scraps that I've been hanging on to for who knows what reason, but now I have to come up with a reason for it. So if you have a lot of scraps of paper laying around, this is a good project. And we're gonna build a house out of construction paper and on the inside, we're gonna actually have Granny's bedroom and all the characters that you can play out the story that we read. There's Granny, the snoring Granny, the dreaming child, the dozing dog, the snoozing cat, the slumbering mouse, and that oh so naughty wakeful flea that stirs everybody up and breaks the bed. And we're even gonna put pockets in the side of it so that you can put your characters, your little paper dolls here away so you don't lose your little mouse or flea or cat or dog or child or granny. And if you don't want to print off the characters from the computer, we can also make our own. I just made a cookie cutter, took a cookie cutter and traced it out on paper. And you can color, it, color that or decorate it with um, construction paper clothing. And I cut out a dog shape and a cat shape. And I cut out a mouse shape. Um, and it went somewhere, I'll find it here in a minute. And, um, and then a little flea shape. And those shapes are what you could do if you want to cut out your um, people. So at any rate, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to make this fun little play set. The first thing you're going to need to make your napping house is going to be construction paper. Now the only really big construction paper I had in my house was red, which is why my napping house is red. And those are the extra long sheets of construction paper. The regular size construction paper sheets look like this. And as you can see, they're half the size. So if you want to do it out of blue, like it is in the book, you can do that too. You just want to take two sheets of the same color and then using a glue stick, you want to glue them together right down the middle and then allow them to thoroughly dry. And then you can proceed as you did as if you've got a long sheet of construction paper because that'll equal the two. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with my long sheet of red here and we'll save our blue construction paper for another craft. So the, first, the next thing you want to do here is take your sheet of construction paper, whether it's one that you just glued together or a full piece, and you want to fold it in into um, so that you've got opening flaps. Um, it's going to be, I guess, in the kind of a, a fourth here on each side. Um, if it's folded down the middle like that, it's easier to see. But if you don't want that crease in there, try to just estimate your fourths. And that's going to be the front of your house, and that's the inside of your house. So when you have your, your folds in place, then you can start making the doors and the windows for your house. As you can see from our sample that we made, um, you're gonna need four white squares, you're gonna need two strips of brown for the doors. You don't have to use yellow if you wanna use another color for the trim, you can use whatever color. I'm just using up scrap materials that I have here at home. Um, I have lots of yellow strips left over. Um, and some brown and some black scraps that I had left over from another project. And we just cut up some white computer paper for the windows. To, um, the, the first thing I actually did was to make the roof. And I know I mispronounced it. I'm from the Midwest and we say roof instead of roof or however it's pronounced. But at any rate, to make the top of your house, you're going to need a half a sheet of black construction paper. And then I folded it in half like this. And then you want to take your scissors and you want to start at the open end at the bottom and you want to go on a diagonal up towards the folded point but you don't want to go all the way to the point because that will give you a very pointy roof and you can if you want but I like kind of a flat top look to mine so I didn't go quite all the way I went just outside of it like that and you can discard your black scraps more scraps and open it back up and there's your triangle roof. And then you wanna open up your house here and take your glue stick or glue bottle, whichever you have. Um, a glue stick actually works really good with this project. So if you've got little fingers and little hands that tend to make big messes with glue, this is kind of fun for them to do that. And it's good practice for them to cut triangles out. So um, there you go. And then you can glue your roof on like that and then close the doors to your house again. Now we're going to do your windows. 
for your windows, you just need to take, um, like I said, I took some pewter paper and I cut it in half and then I folded that half into fourths. Um, and it looks like thirds, but I've already cut some off. And I cut it in thirds and then I measured it so that we would have a width of um, two inches per window this way. I'm sorry, two inches this way and an inch and a half this way. And as you can see, I already made the measured marks. And by folding the papers over, I can cut out multiple windows at a time. Your house can have as many windows in it as you want. If you want to have 50 windows in it, go right ahead. The more the merrier. Um, they don't have to be cleaned like our real windows do. And then you just want to cut your squares in half. You don't really want to make these um, exact. You kind of want to give your house kind of a silly, um, sloppy, kind of lopsided look in the napping house. The... Um, the furniture and the house walls and everything, they're not very straight. So your napping house doesn't need to have very straight parameters either. Plus um, preschoolers aren't very good at exact membership um, measurements. So it's fine if it's not exactly square. If it's close enough to a rectangle, that's great. Um, that'll be good. Then you're also gonna need shutters for your windows. So again, you're gonna wanna take some scrap paper. You kinda wanna eyeball this. Um, take your, your window. Kind of measure how long they are. If you're like me and don't want to do this multiple times, you can fold the paper over and then come up and cut. This is good practice for little kids with scissors because um, it's easier measurements. And then you just have to glue your windows onto the shutters like that. So we're going to go ahead and glue a couple shutters and windows on our house here to show you how this works. And we're going to put one here. And then we'll kind of eyeball how far it's going to go over. And we can put another one here. So we'll put glue on our shutter. And we can put him like this, like that. And then we can put glue on our actual window. And put that down like so. I think our windows are a little, shutters are a little wide. So we'll move it over. Which is the other nice thing about the glue stick is that it's easy to pick up and move if you want. And then just press down really good on your window. Um, again, you can put as many windows on your house if you want, if you want to kind of lay them out. If you put one in the middle, be sure you cut it so that your doors can open or glue it to just one side, not to both sides, so that when your doors open, the window goes with it. Um, so you can put as many windows on your house as you want. And um, you can even put one up in the attic if you want. That's entirely up to you. To make the doors that go in the front, you're gonna want some brown scrap paper. I have some right here. This is about the size that you need. It, it's about um, four, maybe five inches um, long and then about three inches um, tall here. And you're just gonna to wanna to turn it and cut it right down the middle. These are gonna be the doors to your house. And you're going to just glue them on right down here at the opening. If you want to get fancy with your front doors and make them curved or um, cut holes in them to put windows in. You can even put tissue paper behind them if you cut holes in them to give it like a stained glass window in your front door. Go for it. The more creative you can be, the more fun this project can be. I just made it kind of simple because um, not everybody is all that creative and not everybody has got tissue paper at their house. So there's your doors. And then to make um, your cross frames in your window, you're just gonna need some black construction paper. And again, I cut it to the length of our windows. And then you just simply want to cut out really thin strips like this and then like this and like this and like this until you have enough um, cross beams for all your windows. And obviously they are too long for going across. So you kind of want to measure and cut that too. Again, you don't need it to be exact because we're going for kind of a nonsensical, silly kind of look here. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you do like it to be perfect though, then you should probably get out your ruler and your measurements and, um, and have fun with that. For your older kids, that's a really good exercise for math skills. Teach them how to measure um, exactly through inches or centimeters, um, how to learn to the accurate uses of measurements. Um, I think I was in high school and I still couldn't tell you all the difference of the lines on the measurements I got made fun of once because I said, I think it's three hash marks past the three. And my friends all looked at me and went, you don't know what that is? And I said, no, I don't. So it's a good way to learn how to use your ruler too. But anyways, for our preschool kids, for our smaller kids, you can make it goofy and silly and not very perfect. 
With the rest of your black, you can also make the door handles on the doors. And here, again, you can be as creative or as simple as you like. For our preschoolers, I just cut off little squares of my black paper here um, to make it easy. You could also do triangles, whatever shape you think that your um, preschooler would like. And again, it's just a matter of gluing them on. You can also teach them symmetry with um, this project because everything on one side should match what's on the other. Unless, of course, your house is silly and doesn't match, which is fine too. The beautiful thing about these crafts is that there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you are having fun doing it. Um, and then, like on mine, I went ahead and I put windows above our doors. You can cut those out too. Um, these are a little bit trickier, so your preschoolers will probably struggle a little bit more with this one. But you're going to want to measure a piece of paper that's four inches by one and a half inch. And, um, and then as you, fold, as you do it, you want to fold it in half like that. And then you're going to cut just a little bit up. And then you want to go on an angle again. And again, not all the way to the corner, but so that you get something that looks like this when you open it. And then you can cut it right down the middle. Now this is an exaggerated size for showing you what they need to look like. Here's the actual ones that I cut out for our project. And then we're just going to glue these into place here above our door. And we can also do trim for our windows um, with our yellow paper here. If you are so inclined, you can just simply cut off a little bit of yellow and glue that above the door for trim. And that's kind of how you do the outside. Um, I also did a light on my main one here, um, the light above the door. You can do that too if you'd like. Just again, it's a little scrap of black construction paper and yellow construction paper kind of cut out to look like a little light bulb. That's entirely up to you. So have fun being as creative with the outside of your house as you like. Um, you'll use a lot of those um, paper scraps and it makes a glorious mess of your table when you're done. Your kids will have a good time with that. But to go to the inside now of your house, we have to make Granny's bed. And the one that I made, I simply took um, a couple popsicle sticks that I had for the bed frame, and then I took some brown construction paper, and I took some um, paper from my scrapbook set that I thought looked like a bedspread, and I cut out just enough of the scrapbook paper so that I could fold it over the top of the brown to make it look like it was tucked in like that so you can see a little bit of the bed underneath because you can always see a little bit of the messy bed underneath and then we just glued it on with my glue stick like so and then I got my little popsicle sticks if you don't have little popsicle sticks you can use the full size ones just take your scissors not your fabric scissors and cut them in half until you get the shape that size that you want and then I just took my brown marker and I colored them brown on one side. If you like them plain, you can leave them plain. Um, if you want to make them a colored bed and make them pink or purple or green, be my guest. It is your napping house playset. And then I simply came over here and I got out the big glue because the glue stick doesn't glue the um, popsicle sticks down as well as regular glue does. So we went over here and I glued a little bit here. I need to open the glue. That would be helpful glue the bedding down and then we glued a little bit on the back of the sticks and a little bit on the back of the stick and there you are and we can glue the bed down unless you want to be even more creative and cut your bed in half and put it on hinges so the bed could break um, but that's a little bit more than what I wanted to do for this place up today but be my guest if you'd like to do that um, send me an email or a text and let me know how that works for you. I'd be kind of curious to see um, how much fun that would be. All you would really need would be those little brass, um, I can't remember what they're called now, um, hinges or sprockets, whatever you want to call them. Um, and you could pop it through here in the middle and then the bed could break when the flea wakes everybody up. So now all you need is the pockets. And again, you're going to want to get some scrap paper from your scrapbooking um, kits if you have any or just get regular computer paper and color design on it and you want to cut it out to be about the same um, length and width of each pocket in the corner here and um, I have glue on my paper 
and you just want to cut out two on each side, um, especially if you want to make more than just the characters in the book. And with your glue stick, glue on three sides so you have a pocket. If you glue all four sides down, it is not going to work. And so you can glue one here, and you can glue another one over here. And if you want to make additional furniture for, for Granny's house, um, you can store them in your pockets. Um, it can be kind of a fun little paper doll playhouse for your kids to play with. Now again, you're going to need the people. So I went online and I googled the napping house sequencing and I found this great um, uh, picture of all these things from a, a teacher's site and it was free to print off so I printed this one off. It was at, um, I can't even read it what it is from now. If you google it on the internet it's there um, or just or just print off any generic pictures of a grandmother, a boy, a dog, a cat, a mouse, and a flea and you can print those off and color them. Or like I said you can also make your own. And I found my cookie cutter um, from Christmas time, and we traced out a shape. You could also freehand shape out a grandmother shape if you like. Um, and then, of course, like I said before, I just simply cut out the animals for the dog and the cat and the mouse and the flea. And to do the, the cat or the mouse, um, I can give you a little quick demonstration here. You just want to cut a little, you want to cut out the ears. And then a head, and then another ear, so it's kind of bumpy on the top. And then you want to cut out a bottom, and you want to come up and leave over here for a tail. This is the hardest part, is coming in here and cutting for a tail, and then coming in here and cutting up from the tail, come up to the mouse's ear. And there's your little mouse, and you can kind of trim a little bit on this side so they kind of are even. But there's your little mouse. And then for a flea, I just took a little square piece of black construction paper and I cut out a circle. And he is a cute little flea then that you can also have. So if you don't want to print anything off or color anything off and you want to be a little more creative, you can cut out your play, play people with scraps of construction paper too. And there you have it. You have a play set for the napping house and a bed to go on for Granny to sleep. So I hope you enjoyed this craft today. Um, I hope you have fun playing around. And of course, I hope you all get to enjoy a fun nap and um, be frustrated and wakeful for an afternoon of play. Have a good afternoon, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.